Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are spending this week in Scotts Bluff in western Nebraska's Panhandle. This is not only a gorgeous area, but also there's a ton of history here to explore. So come along. The North Platte River is a major tributary of the Platte River, and together, these two rivers stretch for over a thousand miles, from the Missouri River to the North Platte's headwaters in the mountains of Colorado. Native Americans once traveled along game trails following the river. Later, fur trappers would follow the Native American routes to travel west, and eventually, these routes would be known as the Great Platte River Road the primary route for westward emigrants following the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails. Eventually, the Pony Express would follow this route as well. It became the primary avenue of transcontinental travel in the United States, and would remain so until the completion of the first transcontinental railroad. The landscape here provided water and grass for travelers' animals, and buffalo chips were available for fuel where firewood was unavailable. The Mormon Trail hugged the river's north bank, whereas the others stayed on the river's south side. The flow of the North Platte has since been depleted by irrigation since the pioneer days, when during the spring runoff, the river could spread across the floodplain to shallow braided widths of up to a mile. Rising nearly 300 feet above the surrounding valley, invisible from a considerable distance, Chimney Rock was perhaps the most significant landmark on the Mormon Trail. After weeks of crossing a featureless plain, this was the first hint of the arduous mountain crossings that lay ahead further west. Emigrants commented in their diaries that the landmark appeared closer than it actually was, and many sketched or painted it in their journals and carved their names into it. Just 25 miles later, emigrants would face their first obstacle at Scott's Bluff. Scott's Bluff served as a second important landmark on the Oregon Trail, California Trail, and Pony Express Trail. It was visible at a distance from the Mormon Trail. Over a quarter million westward immigrants passed by Scott's Bluff between 1843 and 1869. Scott's Bluff was first charted in 1812 by the historian expedition of fur traders traveling along the North Platte to return to the Missouri River from their newly established trading post at Fort Astoria on the Columbia River. At Scott's Bluff, the narrow space between the bluffs is comprised of badlands that was difficult for travelers with wagons to traverse. In fact, the Native American name for the bluffs translates to the hill that is hard to go around. So initially, the Oregon Trail made an eight-mile detour to Robidoux Pass to negotiate the hills before returning to the river. The Robidoux family established a trading post here in the 1840s, providing blacksmith and grog shops along with other goods for travel. Life for the emigrants was harsh, and many never completed their journey. In the 1850s, a road through Devil's Gap, now known as Mitchell Pass, shortened the detour and became the preferred route of both the Oregon and California trails. The U.S. Department of Interior designated these bluffs as a national monument in 1919 and placed under the management of the National Park Service. A 1.6-mile roadway to the top was constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 1930s. Of note, this is the oldest concrete roadway in Nebraska and contains the state's only three vehicle tunnels.
The bluffs are formed of various layers of limestone, sandstone, and volcanic ash that was washed and blown here over the millennia from the Rocky Mountains further west. Scott's Bluff is named for Hiram Scott, who was a clerk for the Rocky Mountain Fur Company and died near the bluff in 1828 after the expedition was forced to abandon him where he took ill and was unable to continue. The Oregon Trail Museum and Visitor Center sits at the base of the Summit Road. Exhibits focus on the westward expansion and pioneers, as well as the geology and paleontology of the region. When we come back following a quick ad break, we'll visit the town of Scotts Bluff, bring you through the campground in town where we're staying, and share some great campground alternatives in the area. So stay tuned. The cities of Scotts Bluff and Gehring, Nebraska are separated only by the North Platte River. On the east and northeast sides of the bluffs, with Gehring founded in 1887, and Scotts Bluff in 1900 by the Lincoln Land Company, a subsidiary of the Burlington Railroad. Together, the two towns form the seventh largest urban area in Nebraska, despite Scotts Bluff's population numbering fewer than 15,000 residents. Outside of a small downtown core, the outer areas of town are largely industrial in nature, including a beet sugar plant, agricultural machinery fabrication, and more. We're staying along the banks of the North Platte, right in town, where there's a municipal campground at the city's Riverside Park. What this campground lacks in charm, it makes up for in price, at $25 per night for full hookups. This is also one of those campgrounds that utilizes the odd buddy site system, where two back-to-back -back campsites share the same utility pedestal.
Severe thunderstorms with hail are kind of a thing around here. The surrounding Riverside Park is largely unkempt, but there's an extensive path along the river that makes a great spot to walk Zoe. Riverside Park is also home to the only zoo in western Nebraska, immediately adjacent to our campground, with over 125 animals representing more than 50 different species. While we opted to not enter the zoo ourselves, it did provide some glimpses of exotic animals during our walks with Zoe. Intrepid Grand Adventurers, who are members of Zoe's extensive fan club, may have noticed this white disc on her shoulder. That's a Freestyle Libre 2 glucose monitor. Many thanks to the staff at the Animal Health Center in Scotts Bluff, who have diagnosed Zoe with diabetes. We noticed over the past couple of weeks that Zoe's water intake had dramatically increased, so we called ahead and the staff at the Animal Health Center squeezed her in. Zoe's blood sugar is suddenly off the charts. We're hopeful that seven units of insulin, administered every 12 hours, will help to get her glucose levels under control. I'm not embarrassed to admit that Zoe is much better with needles than I am. You gonna get good for me? Are you gonna get good for me? Huh? If you'd like to explore Scotts Bluff, there are several great alternatives available to the campground at Riverside Park. If you're looking for hookups, Robodo RV Park, operated by the city of Gearing, is the place to be. Here you'll find 42 beautifully landscaped water and electric RV campsites on concrete pads, available for $37.44 per night, with a good SAM discount available. Best of all, it's just down the street from Scotts Bluff National Monument. Regrettably, Robodo was already booked full when we hatched our plans to visit Scotts Bluff. A few miles further south, the Wildcat Hills are an escarpment between the North Platte River and Pumpkin Creek. The high tableland between the streams has been eroded by wind and water into a region of forested buttes, ridges, and canyons that rise 490 to 980 feet above the surrounding landscape. Bighorn sheep, pronghorn, elk, mule deer, and wild turkeys live in and around the hills. There are two tiny dry campgrounds in the Wildcat Hills State Recreation Area, with a total of 12 primitive campsites available for $10 per night on a first-come, first-served basis. Further afield, about a half-hour's drive northeast of Scotts Bluff, is Lake Minotaur, where Nebraska State Parks operate several campgrounds around the lake. Electric Plus sites here in the Lakeview Campground cost $30 per night, half of which are reservable. Sure seems out of place in the Nebraska Panhandle, but Lake Minotaur's 55-foot landmark lighthouse was a beacon of hope during the dark days of the Great Depression, when many Americans were jobless. It was built entirely of native stone between 1937 and 1939 by the Veteran Conservation Corps. We hope that you've enjoyed exploring the area surrounding Scotts Bluff, Nebraska with us. 
Coming up next week, we're going to be heading for some lakeside camping at Nebraska's Medicine Creek State Recreation Area. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer yourself, now is the time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a Grand Adventure, which we premiere every Wednesday evening. We'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. Understand, it is extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comment section where we always love to hear from you. So until next week, from Medicine Creek, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.